Good day, YouTube. My name is Dan, and welcome to another episode of CryptoLine. Today, we'll be taking a look at VeChain Thor's first upcoming ICO that is none other than the project Player. Do you know that many crypto investors are actually gamers? There's a significant overlap in the gaming and crypto community. Back in the day, many of the world's first crypto miners were actually gamers who owned the most powerful graphics cards for gaming. And they used the excess power on those powerful gaming graphics cards to mine for Bitcoin. So that definitely has been an overlap of the digitalized communities of crypto and gaming since the beginning. It's no surprise then that over the past couple of years, we've seen many video game related blockchain projects, example, Engine and Wax come into the space. Recently on this channel, we also reviewed Chimera and Bounty, two other blockchain gaming projects that I think have a lot of potential. Player is a project that is very similar to Bounty. Player is a video game focused blockchain platform that aims to build community, content, and rewards for the average gamer. If you want to learn how to earn cryptocurrency from playing your favorite game, keep watching this video. The gaming industry generated a revenue of $116 billion in 2017. That was more than a 10% growth from the previous year. They are currently over 200 million amateur esports players across the globe, and this is expected to grow to 1 billion esports fans by 2025. Many online games like League of Legends of LoL, for example, are free to play. But the game company earns money from options of in-game add-ons, example skins that you can buy. One company, Riot, the company behind Low, once they started organizing team tournaments, their annual revenue grew from $85.3 million to a whopping $1.2 billion in one year. That's over 1,500% growth in just one year. No wonder big gaming companies are moving towards esports and tournaments. But despite a 1.5 billion eSport market last year, only 6% of that market share went to rewarding gamers in the form of prizes, and almost all of that 6% went to professional gamers, leaving the average gamer like you and me with no chance of earning money in the otherwise very lucrative industry. Besides gaming content, streaming content is also a very lucrative business and the game streaming content industry generated $3.8 billion back in 2015, with Twitch and YouTube monopolizing the scene with 43% and 36% of the market share respectively. So that's about 80% of the $3.8 billion market going to only two companies. And once again, very little of that profit actually goes to the content creator or the gamer. A large part of it is kept by the big companies. So that's where Player comes in. Player is a blockchain project that is decentralized gaming and streaming profits by creating avenues for the average gamer like you and me to earn money. This is not done only through playing and competing with other players, but it's also done through community building features like streaming videos or content and managing of the articles, forums, etc. They are also a platform which means that over time, they will add more depths and more features to the project. Because we are right at the beginning of this project, or phase one as they call it, most of the features that I will be covering in this review are really only phase one features, meaning it's only the tip of the iceberg. Phase 2 and Phase 3 details have not been released yet, but will be released in the future, and both Phase 2 and Phase 3 will have their own white paper. So without further ado, let's now take a look at some of the features that player will offer us. The first feature will of course be competing with other players. Matches will be done by standard gameplay, example of 5v5 in the standard mobile like Dota or LoL, and there will even be a new gameplay mode example, a 1v1 mid laner match for mobile games such as low. Players will have to stake uh, player tokens before the match and the winner will earn both player tokens and also reputation points. Reputation points are a feature in the system that allows a player to level up and not only will there be an AI system to match them to the appropriate opponent based on the reputation, but after reaching a certain reputation score, the player becomes known as a veteran player and then he can apply to become a mentor or a coach for less experienced players. 
Of course, the coaching service will be remunerated with tokens. And this feature will allow both the experienced players to earn tokens, but it will also allow the less experienced players to have easy access to professional coaching and improve their skills. This is something which is much lacking in the current gaming scene. Coaches can be rated by the players after each lesson to help future players to choose the best coach for them. Besides informal matches, there will also be tournament matches as well. Players can even organize their own tournaments and set up their own rewards. The entire process of matchmaking and payouts is automated. It is an AI machine that does the matchmaking and it is smart contracts that will hold the initial deposit as an escrow and release it once the match is over. Because it is a blockchain and decentralized driven system, the result verification system is reliable, is resilient towards fraud, false reporting, or any other interferences. If, however, a player was unhappy with the outcome, he can contest the results. The, re the match will then go to a separate body that is known as the tribunal for judging. So besides playing games, another way of earning uh, player tokens is to mine it in that sense. Mining here is done by installing a software on your desktop that will then contribute processing power to help process game data for the pool node. People who are running such a pool node will be rewarded with player tokens. Now, anyone with a player token and a pool node can volunteer to be part of what is known as a tribunal pool that will be rewarded for the efforts of being judged. So in the case of a contested match where one player is unhappy with the outcome of the results, then at least two users from the tribunal pool will be selected at random to review the match. Depending on how important the match is, for example, a final in the tournament would have more than two users reviewing, two tribunal members reviewing the game, it could be up to as many as 20. And all the tribunal reviewers must vote for the outcome for the outcome to be validated. That's where the consensus is. Now, it doesn't say in the white paper what is the penalty for the person who's found to be in the wrong out of this whole process, but we can expect a serious penalty as the white paper makes it very clear that the team takes um, causing harm to the ecosystem very seriously. In other words, there's going to be a strong disincentive uh, for negative in-game behavior like trolling or AFK. Another very common problem in amateur games is smurfing. Now, any gamer will know what smurfing is. Smurfing in gaming is not the blue creature that you see up here. Smurfing in gaming is a behavior where a professional gamer will set up a second account and pretend to be a beginner player so that he can enter a beginner game and bully less experienced players. Smurfing is a big problem in online gaming today because it makes it hard for beginners to enjoy and learn the game. And on the player platform, where tokens are at stake for winning or losing a game, the consequences are potentially much more serious. Player would do its best to protect users against smurfing. It does so by, firstly, tracking user's IP address. So if a user is caught creating multiple accounts with the same IP address, they will receive a warning and could be potentially banned. The second way they do it is by setting limits on how large a pool can be for new accounts. So new users will need to play a certain amount on each account before being allowed to run their own pool tournaments. So this would discourage smurfing because a smurf would have to waste a lot of time leveling up each new account. The third is that they allow players to monitor each other. So again, if you are playing against someone and you felt that they were smurfing, you can report this to the tribunal who will look into the case and punish them accordingly if it was true. There will also be built-in algorithms to catch and punish players who are smurfing. Some gamers may not wish to participate in a tournament-style gaming. For those players, player will offer quests. Quests are activities that you can do without interacting with other players. An example of a quest could be example getting 5 chicken dinners in day 1 of PUBG. So successful completion of the reward or the quest will grant both player tokens as well as reputation points. Player as a system will be using VChain's VID to use the KYC and to set up the user identification. Having this identification system not only protects and hides the user's real identity, but it also enables streamlining of payment processing and reward distribution across any game or content. 
Now, as token investors, we always want to know about token use because token use is what gives our cryptocurrency or investment a demand and value. The entire system here runs on the token, from playing the matches to voting on the tribunal to coaching, e-commerce products, quests, etc. So there's a lot of token use. Furthermore, future features that have not been released yet will include paying donations to content providers, providing VTOR to have your stream and content protected through digital property service, paying to rank cloud computing machines, advertising space, etc. So there's a potentially a lot of token use on this uh, platform. Another factor for token investors to consider is not only the token use, but the general inflation of the project. Is the player project a profitable endeavor? Player did a very conservative estimate of potential earnings, and this was based on the assumption that a player of a game would participate in 10 games per month. 10 games per month is not very much at all. Some of us would play 10 games a day. And this calculation was also based on only four games listed above. So not every game on the platform, just four games. Just four games with 10 games a month would bring in an estimated annual revenue of 97 million. And this again is a very conservative estimate. Now the hard cap for their token sale, which we'll take a look at in just a minute, is set at only 30 million. So 97 million is more than triple of that. And again, that's a very conservative estimate. So just based on numbers, as token investors, we can hope for a decent inflation of the project's worth. In other words, this sounds numerically like a good investment. This is the team behind the project. As always, I'll go through a couple of them with you and then leave you to go through the rest of the resumes yourself. Patrick Tang is their CEO. He's founded several startups and hardware companies and has a very strong tech background working for big companies such as Dell and EMC. He's also an avid gamer who plays CSGO. Man King Fong is one of their co-founders. He's also the founder of another company called Global Esports, and he manages the number one female professional esports team in Hong Kong. He also organized one of the largest esports events in Asia, the Asia City League, and he was also the previous co-founder of the Memoriki Limited, a leading game publisher. You can go through the rest of the team's resume in your own time. Many of them are, as you can imagine, gamers. And one of the ladies, Dear Chan, is the leader of the top Hong Kong low team, and she will also be playing and mentoring on the player platform. There's also quite a bit of tech experience, with their senior project manager having blockchain experience. So overall, this is a small but solid team. These are their lists of advisors. There are more advisors listed than team members, which I found interesting. One of their strategic advisor is none other than Sunny Liu, the CEO of VeChain. So that's huge, guys. Another one of their strategic investors is called Cream, who describes himself as a crypto merchant bank. So very generic description. I tried Googling them, but I couldn't find much information about them at all. Under their general advisors, the first name is Box Mining. I love Box Mining. Box Mining is a crypto YouTuber who brings great value to the space. I'm sure many of you know him, and I'm personally subscribed to his channel. So I was really glad to see Box Mining on board with this um, project. He will be their first public advisor. They've also got Zi Yuan Guan, who was the previous manager at Tencent's mobile game division, and he's launched several popular games already. He has also formed a new esports focused company, and that has already raised over 7 million in just his round A uh, fundraising. They also have the CEO as well as the CSO of the NGE, which is Next Generation Esports, which is one of North America's largest content providers on board. And you can go through the rest of the advisor's resumes in your own time. But on the whole, I would say this is a very solid team, definitely one that inspires confidence. This is the roadmap of the project. It's a good example of what a good roadmap looks like. It has very clear milestones. It's not too detailed or too sparse. And it goes on for a long period of time. In fact, it goes on for four years to the end of 2021. Many things uh, the main things to highlight here is the whitelist for public sale is happening right now. In the third quarter of this year, the next quarter, we will see the release of basic tournament features with an alpha release of CSGO. The fourth quarter of 2018 will be the private beta and match verification system. And it's really only in the first quarter of next year, 2019, that we will see the public beta. It is only in the second quarter of 2019, so one year from now, that we will see the public launch in North America, 
And then this will be followed up with the public launch in Asia and Europe in third quarter and fourth quarter respectively. I did wonder why are they starting in North America because many other similar gaming projects tend to start in Asia because Asia as a continent accounts for 50% of the world's online gaming revenue which is much more than North America. In 2020 and 2021, we will see player as a project take a turn to develop their own platform with the aim to fully launch their own mainnet with sidechains by the end of 2021. So I think that's going to be really exciting and that's going to launch this project to a whole new level with a whole new market value. At this point, I should probably mention briefly some of the things that we can look forward to in phase two and phase three of the project. As I explained at the start, the current white paper and all the features that I have outlined is really only the first phase of the player project. Details of phase two and phase three will be released in the future and they will have their own white paper. But a brief description of what we can expect in those phases are, in phase two, they will be utilizing blockchain technology to see player create a decentralized streaming network. There will be more rewarding features through watching, participating, and lending resources for streams and videos. So basically, that's the time that they will take on Twitch and YouTube as streaming networks. Phase 3 is really mind-blowing. Okay? Phase 3 is when gamers can tap into cloud computing resources to rent, play, and stream video games with the combined computing power of the participants. So basically, you can monetize your excess computing power if you have a very powerful computer by selling or sharing the excess computing power to the decentralized blockchain network which other people can buy. So think of Substratum, but specifically for gaming. This will essentially solve any lagging, poor latency or ping in gaming, which will be absolutely huge, especially for a platform where uh, performance and tournaments and staking of tokens um, is happening. In phase three as well, player will release SDKs and resources to allow additional gaming dApps to be built on the player platform, meaning that they are going to go open source and all these features of how to earn money is their own way of how to uh, different features for us to earn money. But open source means that other developers can come in and launch their own initiatives for additional source of uh, revenue. So this is really a project with a very massive scope. From an investor's perspective, it's looking like a very long huddle, but one with a huge potential for huge returns. Finally, let's take a look at the token mechanics for the ICO fundraising. The ICO fundraising will be done in three rounds. There will be the private round, which has already finished. There will be the VeChain community round, which is happening now. And then there will be a public round for non-VeChain holders when the community round is finished. There will will be a total of 100 billion tokens as their total supply. 100 billion tokens is a lot, of which 25% will be used in the ICO sale now with a hard cap of 30 million, and another 2.5% will be sold in a special mainnet launch. So totaling 27.5% of all tokens will be sold. The usual range for ICO fundraising is about 30 to 40% of tokens sold. So this is slightly less, but not too significant. The total price at ICO will be 0.12 cent. So 30 million is the for hard cap is a very average figure to raise these days. Telegram, for example, is trying to raise 2 billion for the ICO. So in comparison, 30 million is a very reasonable number, and I believe that they will hit the hard cap very quickly. Furthermore, first ICOs for any platform, for any good platform like Neo, Icon, etc., tend to be very popular and have a lot of community hype. And so I expect the same for player. And I think that they will have a lot of hype and awareness definitely amongst the VeChain community. KYC and whitelist is required. So if you're interested, make sure you sign up for it now and quickly because I think that this is an ICO that will be snatched up very quickly. In the VeChain community round, this is a round that is specific for VeChain members or VeChain token holders to buy. Okay, um, that round will be open to all community members who hold VAT tokens. However, there will be a discount for Xnode holders ranging from 5 to 20%. If you want to learn more about Xnodes, please refer to our video that is called Everything You Need to Know About VeChain. Now, Player has announced that they will do 85% of their sales with VAT tokens. For the VeChain community round, there will be a minimum investment of 300 VAT tokens. And in the public round, there will be a minimum of 100 VAT tokens uh, buy-in. 
The team will receive 10% of the total payment uh, of the total supply as payments. That's not very much. And their share will be locked in for 24 months. A team locking in their token share is always a good sign that they are confident that the project will be successful because if they were to fail any time before they get their returns, the team essentially gets no benefits. The advisors and partner pool will get 15% and then their enterprise and title partners pool will get 20% of the total supply. Now this is very huge compared to other projects, but if you think about it, um, because their partnerships includes games that they absolutely have to partner with, if not, they have no project. And those are fairly big games. They need a sufficient amount to incentivize those partnerships. 15% of the total supply is also reserved to reward the community members for various contributions to the projects. So I'm thinking this is probably a bounty of some sort or a referral project uh, program in the future. We'll have to wait and see, but it's a rather generous allocation and it's something that the token holders like you and me can look forward to. So in conclusion, I'm going to use this table to wrap things up. There is currently no project quite like Player. There are similar projects like Bounty, but the long-term scope of Player is much bigger. Player as a project is trying to combine something like Bounty, which rewards the average gamers, combine it with Twitch or YouTube where they stream gaming content, combine it with Engine and WEX with where there is an in-game item market, and combine it as well with tournament hosting as well as other unique features like coaching and token mining, etc. It will be a single platform with all of these features and a single currency that will be used by all tournaments for all games. It's going to be so convenient and I think that if they take off and they achieve it, it's going to be absolutely huge. In the longer term, besides just being a gaming platform, they will be a mainnet with their own dApps and ecosystem. And this is also, as I said before, the very first ICO of VeChain. So I think that this is a project that definitely will garner a lot of market awareness and hype. And when they are, their hard cap is a fairly low hard cap of only 30 million, which means that the token price has a lot of room to grow. So personally, I think that Player is a great ICO investment and definitely a project to keep your eye on. So that's it guys, those are my thoughts on Player, VeChain's first ICO. I like it, but I'm not a professional and this is not professional advice. So please always do your own research and make your own decision. Let us know in the comment section below what you think of Player, whether you like it and whether or not you think it's a good investment. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like this video and you found it helpful, give us that like and subscribe. Do also join our Telegram group for more great discussions about new and upcoming coins like Player. Have a fantastic day wherever you are and I'll catch you guys soon with another video.